08000 30 40 44 or download our free this morning app and click get involved making sure you leave a contact number and please get in touch by 11 15 today you must be 18 or over now, then, during lockdown, there have been reports of nature flourishing all over the world. Yes, with less planes in the sky and fewer boats in the sea, animals, including bees, birds and even humpback whales, are said to be thriving. And, uh, Thriving? Thriving. Are they thriving? <laughs> it's a, it's Fri an aquatic term for thriving. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Attenborough. And uh, another <laughs> species who benefited, apparently, are merfolk. Uh, Karen Kay, who is known as the Mermaid Whisperer, says that mermaids oh, wow. have, uh, have loved the cleaner oceans during lockdown. She joins us now to uh, tell us more. And look what's washed up on the beach. Hey, no, look in front at of that. Her. Amazing. Uh, quite, quite extraordinary. You're on Marazion Beach in Cornwall, aren't you? Yes, we're here now and we've got the beautiful St Michael's Mount behind us and it's lovely. It's a little bit misly, but um, it's nice. <laughs> so, um, so, OK, mermaid whispering. Um, what do they whisper? What do they tell you? Well, at the moment, they're telling me telepathically that they're happy because there's been less activity on the oceans which is really good for them and all marine life basically so there's things like rare sea seahorses coming back to life again and the coral reefs and all these sorts of things and the mermaids are guardians of the ocean so they're super happy about this so when did you first get into this why mermaids Well, first of all, why not mermaids? They're wonderful, aren't they? So when I moved to Cornwall, we're going back many, many years. I felt a calling in my heart. I was a party girl in London. I loved London and I had the calling to come to Cornwall. And when I came here, I just knew that I was home. Um, it, it's a feeling that I can't really describe and the ocean just called to me and I found myself sketching mermaids. Now that might sound okay, she sketches mermaids, but I'm not an artist, far from it actually. Uh, and I just drew all these mermaids, warrior mermaids, male mermen <laughs> and, um, and it just came through and I just felt this inexplicable pull to the ocean and a connection with them. You, um, you would think really that the merfolk, um, knowing the mess we've made of the land, would quite like to keep it quiet that they were there and to crack on with their mer lives all on, on their own. Why, why do they contact you? What, what, what have they got to say? What do they think of us? Well, <laughs> that you're right in saying that because humanity doesn't really treat the oceans very well. Single-use plastics and chemical pollution, etc. But when they feel, because it's all about feelings with mermaids, because it's under the sea, it's emotions, it's fluid. When they feel that there's a human, because remember, mermaids are half human too. <laughs> so when they feel that there are humans or a human that is receptive to their message, then they will come forward to say, look, come on, this is our environment. We, we've got to live in this and, and it's a mess. So they'll come forward and, and kind of, not just me, there are other people as well that will hear the messages from the mermaids and they will hear and act upon those messages and share the message. Well, can you speak to them now? I mean, I'm just wondering how the mermaids are in lockdown. How are they feeling? Is there anything? I mean, they've got a lovely platform here now on TV. Is there anything they'd like to say? Well, the mermaids are very happy during lockdown because, as I said, there's less activity on the ocean. So it means that they've got the domain over their domain, if you like. They want everybody to know that the ocean is their home. And even though we can't all see them and we can't all hear them, they are definitely there. The same as fairies are guardians of the land, mermaids are guardians of the ocean. And they just want us to know that we need to protect it because water is the source of all life. So, so can, can you talk to them now? Or me, even. <laughs> I'm trying to hear them, but it's a bit noisy. <laughs> it's noisy? I can't speak to them right this minute. Okay. Yeah, because we've got the sea and the ocean perhaps um, in the background. 
Yeah, that can be noisy, can't Look, it? Look, they're definitely there, and they're aware that this is happening, that's for sure. And so, and the thing is, the thing is that, that you know, you're actually frightened of the sea. I'm not frightened of the sea. I'm a little bit anxious of, about the sea because when I was younger, I had, I call it like a near drowning experience. And, and I was in a swimming pool with a lot of people and we were in Spain and the pool went deeper. We were doing ring a ring of roses. And as everyone was going around, I was going under the water. So I would, but nobody noticed. So I've got a little bit of a fear, but I do go in, I paddle all the time and I'll go up to my knees. And sometimes I will go in, but I, I do, I'm, I'm going to get the mermaids to help me conquer that fear. Mm. Good idea. And, and who's with you today? You've got Moontail there, and Moontail is a professional mermaid. So, so what is the difference between a professional mermaid and a real mermaid? OK, so Moontail's is a professional mermaid. She also has a mer heart, so she does believe in mermaids too. She's a human who respects and appreciates the mermaids. And she she's created her own tail with her own fair hands, uh, which is incredible. And uh, she will go to various events and talk to children and people and be a resident mermaid. So people will literally hire her to go to their event. And I mean, they're not going to be disappointed, are they? She's no. beautiful, I mean, it's inside and out. It is an amazing tail, and I'm actually quite relieved to hear that that's that's who she, who she is. Because I thought if that is a real mermaid, someone's going to either get a bucket of water on her or chuck her back in the sea. <laughs> she's going to dry out. <laughs> so uh, so you can you can do you yeah. can do uh, meditation. Mer mermaid um, uh, meditation, can you? Yeah, I can. Would you like me to do yes, that? Please. Yeah, sure. We're, well, we were doing breathing exercises yesterday, so let's do let's do mermaid meditation today. Okay, I'll lead you and the nation in a mermaid meditation. That's a bit of a wrap, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so if everybody gets themselves nice and comfortable and relaxed and take a couple of deep breaths just to centre yourself and then imagine that you're on a beach, on the shore of a beach. You can hear the breeze and the sea coming in and out and you slowly walk towards the water's edge you remove your shoes and your socks if you're wearing them in your mind. <laughs> and as you're taking your shoes and socks off, imagine that you're releasing all of your cares and concerns. And you feel a sense of relief and deep peace. Then you look out to the ocean and you see a mermaid in whatever form suits you. So your ideal mermaid is swimming towards you. She or he is splashing around and making huge bubbles. And then an enormous bubble comes up and totally envelops you until you find yourself inside a mermaid bubble. It's peaceful, it's safe, it's relaxing, and you feel totally protected. And you can stay in this bubble for as long as you like, or you can take your finger and pop the bubble and it will go, but you can bring this bubble back any time through this visualisation. And it's a really simple technique that you can do anywhere, at any time, to make yourself feel calm, relaxed and at peace, especially during these challenging lockdown times. I hope you enjoyed that. that Thank lovely. you. No, it was Thank lovely. You, we did. misbehaved, as we always do, um, but, uh, but that was absolutely lovely. It was the bubbles coming up next to yeah. the mermaid. <laughs> I knew that I'd get you. Um, Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, lovely to talk to you. And in fact, the last time I think you talked to us, you were in the studio uh, talking, talking to fairies. Yeah, so, that's right. So, um, you know, you are, you are multi-lingual yeah, when it comes to the spirit world. They're all elemental of the elemental realm. And um, you've got, a, you've got a, a, book, a card book and a guidebook, messages from the mermaids, and they're all available now as well. Thank you so much. Lovely to talk to you. Thank you, Karen. They are, yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Now. Bye. See, bye. I, what I like, I mean, it's, I, you know me, I'm a, obviously I'm going to snigger a bit, but I lo what I, I like... I was only laughing like at the, the farting bubble. I that know that, it. I know, and I knew I my eyes, the minute she said it, I opened my eyes and I knew I'd get you. But, <laughs> uh, but um, 
nicely spiritual. I love the fact that you can sit and think about the sea. Yeah. Uh, that's quite nice. And also there's a little environmental message in there. No, well. I agree. I agree. Right, coming up in just a moment, Dr Zoe is showing you how to keep in shape and comfort of your living room. She's sharing her pick of the best fitness gadgets. That's next. First, Alison's got a prize that'll really put a smile on your face. Here's how you could win a life-changing £300,000. <laughs> just imagine what...